الرحمن الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين الصلاة والسلام على محمد رسول الله ومصطفى أمين ولا آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك الله أشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله قال تعالى في القرآن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان في خسر إلى الذين آمنوا وأملوا صالحا وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الحمد لله أمين All praise and thanks and glorification is due to Allah The praise is due to Allah simply because the praise belongs to Allah It is His property He has no partners, He has no associates He has no ancestors, He has no descendants He has no mother, no father, no daughter, no wife, no son He rules the universe alone And I witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah Prayers and peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. It's been recited in one of the shortest uh, surahs of the Quran, a very, very strong reminder uh, that Allah is telling us that people are going to lose. The people are going to be losers, with the exception of those who believe and do deeds of righteousness and, and who remind, influence, Encourage each other to the reality, which is Allah, and remind, influence, encourage each other to what's up, to, to be consistent with patience. That is a reminder we are obligated to give each other, subhanAllah. And surely after this, the best speech is the book of Allah, the best guidance is that is Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of all things are distortions in this deen, or newly invented matters that attempt to change this religion. That is called bid'ah, for all bid'ah is astray, and all, is, all the astray will lead one directly to the hellfire. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah has given us an opportunity to preserve ourselves and preserve, and an instruction actually to not only preserve ourselves, but to preserve our families. But there's an element there that some, for some reason it seems that too many Muslim families are overlooking. When Allah says clearly in Surah Al-Tahrim, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ أَحْلِكُوا نَارًا وَقُدُوا هَلْنَاسُ وَهِجْرَاتِ Allah says, O oh, you who believe, save yourselves and your families from a fire whose fuel is people and stones. That's a serious fire. You know, for a fire, for when Allah created hellfire, when Allah created hellfire, uh, uh, He didn't use, He didn't come up with with the fuel that we use for fires today. The, when Allah created hellfire, He created it um, so that the fuel for the fire would be the people who were created to be fuel for the hellfire, and then stones. Why stone? Because stones maintain heat. If you ever went to a sauna room, you, there's stones there because they they, they retain heat. So it fuels people. So save yourselves and your families from a fire who fuels, fuels people in stones. Now, in, 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 the, in the, the last part of that ayah, Allah is reminding us. He said, "In this fire, there are angels who are, who are stern and severe and don't flinch or hesitate from carrying out the, the commandments of Allah. They don't compromise. They don't feel sorry for you. They don't negotiate. They don't bargain." You see? And they, they do exactly as they are commanded. That's what Allah says in the Quran. SubhanAllah. Wa yaqaluna ma yu'maroon. They do exactly as they're commanded. They don't care. You see? It's not their problem if you did wrong because you say you were oppressed. Because there's an eye in the Quran also that says, well, you know, uh, didn't Allah make the earth spacious enough for you to move away from evil? I mean, did you have to be there to do that? But then it's also, and I'm talking to the parents today, it's also not the angels of the hellfire, it's not their problem that some people in the hellfire didn't get proper training when they were babies. That's not their problem. That's the people's problem that's there. If we don't train our babies, if we don't teach them and train them to fall in love with Islam, to fall in love with the proper adab, with the manners, 
with the etiquettes of Islam, to fall in love with the Quran, if we don't train them to love making salat, if we don't train them to, to at least respect the month of Ramadan, they, they may, not, may not be able to go without food and drink, but they can be trained to respect it, to respect the house of Allah. Don't you know that Allah admonished Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, was trying to stop uh, Ali from correcting his, his sons, Allah admonished him. There is a very confirmed authentic hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given a doris uh, in a masjid, and his two sons, his two grandsons, Hussein and Hassan, were wrestling and playing. And, 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 and he, said, he said, stop. They were distracting the people. Would well, the prophet let his children play on his back? He never, there's no record that he allowed the children of the master to distract other people's salat and break their koshu. So he said, stop and stop. They wouldn't stop. But suddenly they stopped and they sat still because, you know, in those days the masters didn't, weren't closed in. The, the, the windows were just opening. And for some reason they suddenly stopped and sat still. Who appeared at the door? Their father, Ali. He went straight to them, picked them up, smacked them, picked up the other one and spanked them. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, out of his tender heart, he says, don't do that, Ali. My grandchildren are like roses to my eyes. At that very moment, Jibril came down and said, Ya Rasulullah, El Haq sent me to tell you to leave the children to their father to learn manners in the masjid. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah. This was Allah talking to the noble prophets of Allah Wasallam, the chief of all the prophets, the leader of all the prophets, the one whose name we have to recite before our prayer is finished, the one whose name can be mentioned in the same breath as Allah when we take the shahadatain. Allah sent, sent Jibril to tell him, no, they need to learn manners in the masjid. But we get soft and weak and intimidated by our children. So when Allah says, save yourselves and your families from a fire, he didn't say, save yourselves and your families except the children from the fire. Your children are the family. The children is part of what makes the family a family other than the husband and wife just being married. SubhanAllah. So the angels of the hellfire, they don't ask questions. Except, you know, did anybody tell you? The, the ones that are doing the punishment don't ask anything. There's other angels around there. They said, anybody tell you about, about Allah and his messenger? Anybody tell you, to, who, who is your leader? Who told you about this stuff that you was doing? Was it wrong? And we can't look around and nobody's there to stand up for us, even the ones who influenced us. There's no compromise, no bargain, no personal feelings. No feeling sorry because they weren't taught better as babies. Brothers and sisters, I appeal to you, save these babies. We, gotta, we have a serious dilemma throughout the Muslim community. I'll talk about America because that's where we are. I can't deal with the other country. I've been to many of them, but we talk about America. Do many Muslims in America compromise? Not only compromise the deen, but we're teaching our children to compromise the religion, subhanAllah. We're missing the mark. This is worse than spoiling. We're, we're killing them. You know what spoiling is? You know what spoiling is? Spoiling the child means you give them rewards that they don't earn. You buy them gifts and stuff, and they still act up. That's spoiling. This is worse than spoiling. We're killing them Islamically. We're killing their morals. We're giving the impression that Islam is expendable. You can take it or leave it. Yes. Even taking a, uh, we've even taken electronic babysitting to a new level. It was bad enough when television entered the, fa the family homes. That was just one-way communication. Then we got the internet, where it, where it is an exchange. That wasn't good enough. We weren't satisfied that we was allowing, inviting shaitan into our house. We, that wasn't good enough. That wasn't bad enough. We wanted to do more. So what we do, we give our children their own computer, their own website, their own email address, 
And that still wasn't good enough. That's just when they go home. Then on top of that, we buy them a smartphone. And they're, and they're racing through the community, chatting with people they don't know. Muslim children are just been a victim as, as, as sex trafficking as non-Muslims. Don't be fooled because your little, your little child, uh, Abdul or Aisha, come in the house and say, Salaamu Alaikum, Mama, Salaamu Alaikum, Papa, and you think you got them. And you teach them a few swords from the Quran. Listen to my child recite the Quran. Like that's going to get them into paradise. Reciting the Quran helps you once you get into paradise, after you get there. Because Allah will say to you what Jibril said to Muhammad, uh, to, to, uh, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ikra bismi rabbaka rabbi khalat. Whatever you memorize in this life, after you get in paradise, you recite it. Allah will say that to you, recite it, and the more you can recite from memory, the higher your station in paradise go. That's all. But you can't, listen, the Quran is not a magic wand to transform your children into good children. There's hips classes all over the world whose children aren't, who, who, the, the students aren't being taught a dab in the masjid. Proper way to address their parents. I know children that memorize the Quran from Al Fatiha to Al Nas. Beautiful recitation, make you cry. And then when their parents call them, they say, What? No. Huh? Are you kidding me? How many of us are from the old school when it was a sin to not answer your parents, ma'am or sir? For anybody, or, or y'all too young for to remember those days? Subhanallah. We're bringing them, we're bringing our children to the master to play with their toys. Not only in the, throughout the year, right smack dab in the middle of Ramadan. We tell, they come to the, racing through the master, playing the, the video games on their cell phone. Couple brothers, one young brothers got upset with our security because he's sitting over in the corner doing the prayer, during the prayer, playing the video games on his cell phone. Told him to turn it off. He got an attitude. He told his father, he said, children will be children. Children will be children, so what? SubhanAllah. We say, let them be children. We say, let them be children. I don't want to rob them of their childhood. SubhanAllah. We're trying to rob. We got 11 months. If Allah extended the year and extended the year and said, okay, from now on the year is 24 months and gave us 23 months, some of us it still wouldn't be enough. Let them be children. I don't want to rob them of their childhood. But in our effort to avoid <coughs> robbing the children of their childhood, we're robbing them of their adulthood. Because they're going to grow up compromising and thinking that what you taught them to, to, to do as babies was still okay and it would never change. We see it in their disposition. Look throughout the Muslim community. Look in Tadawi prayer that the Muslims, some of the Muslims turned Tadawi into an annual carnival. Do a four rock arts and go outside, you know, and know it's, a, it's only a sunnah. You don't have to pray, though. They go outside and light up a cigarette and drink some coffee and crack some jokes. And when the children ask them anything, they say, well, you're too young for this. You're too young to smoke cigarettes. When you become an adult, then you can contaminate your lungs and your bloodstream with tar and nicotine and disobey Allah and use the lungs he gave you to praise him to, 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 and, and just smoke. When you get old enough, you can do like me. That's what we're telling them. Isn't it, isn't it ironic that in the English language, the word zinna is translated to adultery? In other words, we're telling our children, when you become an adult, you can do anything you want to do. SubhanAllah. <laughs> Save the babies, brothers and sisters. We're killing them. We make a dua and ask Allah to give us a good spouse. Alhamdulillah. Give us beautiful children. We get the children. We're rocking them in our arms. Saying all the beautiful things. Maybe he or she will grow up to be a hapis. Maybe you'll be an imam. Maybe she'll be a teacher. Maybe she'll be a scholar or an engineer or a doctor. And then as the welcome starts wearing off, soon they start walking, then the welcome wears off. And we let them do anything, expose them to anything. And then we have the audacity to wait until we pick up the Quran to say, Eldu billahi minish shaitan rajim. 
We say, oh, I seek refuge in the law from, from, from shaitan to reject it only when you're reading the Quran. How about when you step into your house? How about when you turn on the TV? How about when you turn your children loose in their bedroom, in their privacy, with a, with a cell phone in their own computer, and their TV with 250 stations to it? Why don't we say, El Dubilah, Mr. Shaitan Rajim, then? Why don't we say, El Dubilah, when we take it, when we go shopping, after we have worked all week to get paid, and we let our children dictate to us how to spend the money? They're not wearing those shoes, Dad, Mom. They don't wear them. I, you can't buy me them shoes from Walmart. I got to go to Foot Locker, SubhanAllah. We, dress, we think it's cute. Oh, we're in America. They have to fit in. I don't want them to be profiled. So we take our cute little innocent, pure, halal, tired, beautiful little girls, dress them up in a cute little party dress with their little panties showing, put a little ribbons in their hair, and they think it's cute. Then they reach puberty. Now with all the stuff they put in the food, puberty is coming so early you wonder if they can get out of kindergarten without being puberty. Then they reach puberty. Then they get 15, and they still want to dress like they did when they were six years old. Who's to blame? Huh? The man? Because he don't teach about it? Children get 15, 16 years old. The little girls fall in love with some non-Muslim, hog-eating, polytheistic nutcase. And then you go running to you, Brother Imam, can you give a khutbah uh, about why they should marry a movement? So you want me to fix in a 30-minute quote by when you spent 16 years messing up. Save the babies, brothers and sisters. It's, a, it's, it's an epidemic. It's critical. And we can't play. Some of you are newly married. You got newborn babies. I appeal to you. Start working with them right now. Because I'm telling you from experience, you're going to lose them. Because shaitan is relentless. And Allah knows how relentless he is. Because he doesn't say the Quran don't follow Shaitan. That's too obvious. He said he's locked up now. He said don't follow the footsteps of Shaitan. Don't go where he want to, wants to go. Don't go where he's been. Don't do what he likes. Save yourselves and your family, which means your wife, your husband, your children, your grandchildren. Save everybody who, who you care about from the fire. And don't worry about hurting their feelings. If they were sticking their finger in the fire on the oven, you snatch it back. But how about the hellfire? You don't care about that? SubhanAllah. Let the children be children. I want, I want them to, to be able to make their own choice. That's what the young, you know, uh, progressive parents say now. I want them to just make their own choice. I don't want to force it. There's a difference between forcing your children and directing them. Our responsibility, our responsibility is to direct them. We got to show them the way. Even, even we have to ask Allah to show us the way while we're on the path. We say that Fatiha. It not surat the most it, didn't say, it doesn't say guide me to the straight path. If you're reciting out Fatih, you're already on the straight path. I need guidance while I'm on it. We got the children. We got what we asked for. Okay, thank you, Allah. You gave me the children. Now I can just go brag about them. I got children. I got a son. I got six daughters. Yeah. You know, subhanAllah. But our duty never stops. Our responsibility increases. With what Allah, to whom much is given, much is required. We say don't force them. I'm, I, we shouldn't force the children. But we need, let them choose. They need to know what to choose. We have to teach them what they're supposed to choose. We need to show them what happens if you choose the wrong thing. And then, after we've done all that we could, after we've taught all that we could teach, after we spank their behinds if they re refuse to come to Salat after they're seven, eight years old. After we read as much Quran as we could. And then when they grow up, if, they, if shaitan m moves them to turn away from Islam, your conscience is clear. Because they're going to be asked on the day of judgment, who were your parents? What did they tell you about me and my messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam?
Oh, nothing. We just, you know, we just played. We just, you know, they took me to the mall. They bought me Air Jordans and, you know, everything. I got a smartphone, a smart watch, a GPS. I got everything. They bought me a car as soon as I turned 16. They, they was nice to me. That you didn't answer my question. What did they tell you about me and my messenger and this dean that you were supposed to embrace? If they, if they told, well, they tried to tell me, but I wouldn't listen. That's your problem. That's what the angels, the angels of hellfire, they don't, they don't have sympathy because they don't understand sympathy. They don't understand disobedience. Angels don't even understand. They can't process disobedience. That's why they were confused with a breach. When Allah told the, the jinn and the angels to bow down, and everybody bowed down except the bleach, the angels were confused. What, what, what's this? Well, I said, that's called arrogance. Iblis didn't even know he was arrogant until Allah identified it. We need to make sure that if, and that's a big if in many of our cases, too many, if we are sincere about Islam, if we're truly grateful to Allah for this deen, if we're truly grateful to Allah for guiding us away and giving us a big step towards the paradise and a big giant step away from the hellfire, if we're truly grateful to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if the, if the Quran is really our favorite book, if the Masjid is really our favorite place to hang out, if that's the truth, then try to impress that upon your children and quit making excuses for them. Because certainly, not if, but since Allah told the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to leave the children to their father to learn manners in the masjid. And he's talking to the prophet of Islam, the mightiest prophet to ever walk the planet Earth. The one who was guaranteed paradise. The one who had miracles that, that even the other prophets could have envied. Voodoo water coming from his fingertips and eyes behind his head and knowing who was going to get killed in the battle and who killed him, where they would fall. If he corrected him, who are we to sit up talking about, oh, let them be children? I was at a master in a, a Tartary prayer in Ohio once, and then some children were wrestling and playing during the beautiful recitation, the brother from Egypt, beautiful recitation. But we kept break, losing our, our kushu, all of us, because the children were playing and wrestling. He interrupted after the next set of rock outs. He stopped this presentation. He said, this thought of we pray will not continue to those parents take those kids home. Because you don't really have to be here. There's no obligation to be at the master for thought of we pray. There's a big blessing. No obligation. No penalty. Take your children home so we can enjoy our salat. If you want to pray, you can do your thought of we pray at home. He took the children home. He took a deep breath, continued, and we had a beautiful thought of we pray. And Shafi will with her after that. It's reality, brothers and sisters. Quit making excuses. Don't force them, they say. Let them choose. But we need to learn, we need to teach them with discipline how to develop self-discipline. Kuli Kali Hadha stuck for La ilaha illallah Bismillah O Allah, please send your choices, prayers, and peace upon Muhammad, upon his wives, upon his children upon his grandchildren, and upon his companions, Ejmaim. Oh Allah, we beg you, oh Allah, to make us among those that learn how to see each other the way that we want you to see us. Kula Amin. Subhan Allah. May Allah bless us and may Allah accept the best of our deeds during this beautiful month of Ramadan. We're more than halfway through it, I believe. And as we approach it, we're still in that oven. So we're not completely baked yet. So if we, have any, if we recognize any deficiencies in ourselves, there's still time to fix them before the oven finished baking us, and we run the risk of it exiting this oven on E day and, and not in a good or a better condition than we were when we went in. We pray along, we accept the best of our fasts. 
those of us who are unable to, to, to fast from the food and drink, there's many things we could do. There's, there's, there's thousands, actually there's thousands. If you read the Hadith, there's thousands of ways to get into paradise. Thousands. You know, so I'm saying, if you do this, you go to paradise. If you do this, Allah is so merciful, and, and he sent Prophet Muhammad as a mercy to all mankind. There are literally thousands of ways to get into paradise. But only one way to get into the hellfire. And that's disobey Allah, subhanAllah. So we should pray, Almighty Allah, subhanAllah wa ta'ala, azawajal, that we will get the best out of this month of Ramadan, and that he will bless us and, 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 and strengthen us to appreciate it more. My beloved brothers and sisters, uh, here at Master of Tawheed, uh, we continue to uh, imitate uh, uh, the example of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His strongest point, even though they, they, he has strong soldiers around him, even though the, the battles that they won far exceed the battles that they didn't win, uh, his most uh, powerful uh, form of dawah was community services. He serviced the people. He fed the hungry. He clothed the naked. He, 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 con he con counseled and consoled the, helpless, the hopeless people. He was patient even with his enemies. SubhanAllah. He had to get a divine revelation just to fight the enemies. He didn't want to hurt anybody. You know, SubhanAllah. So, and this master um, focuses a lot of our, most of our work on community services and giving hope and help to the, to the less fortunate, the underserved. And not only the non-Muslims who need food and clothing and furniture, but the Muslims who worship here and the Muslims we're aware of. There are single mothers in this Jamaat that need help. There are underemployed fathers of leaders of families that need some help. There's, 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 there's widows that need help. There's some orphans in this community that need help. And, and so because of our community services, because of our Quranic education program, because of our dawah, effort, where this masjid is definitely eligible for zakat. So you can pay your annual zakat here at Masjid of Tawheed and know for sure that they will be able to show you evidence on how it was used Islamically and lawfully. We do a lot of construction. Every time you come, you see something better. That's not where the zakat money goes. We sweat and preach and scream and cry like I do to raise that kind of money. But to take care of our orphans and single, single mothers and uh, underemployed or unemployed fathers and widows, and we, need, we have a right to expect the, the annual zakat because that turns it into sadaqa for those people that need it. And we distribute it, and if, and if you want evidence of how we distribute it, we'll give it to you. But trust us, and the people will tell you. Look around. We see you evidence everywhere. As I conclude... You have a right to ask for evidence. Didn't uh, um, Ibrahim alayhi salam ask Allah for evidence in, in the Surah Al-Baqarah? Well, if Allah Rabbi, uh, well, if Allah Ibrahim Rabbi already gave it to him out there. Show me how you give life to the dead. Allah didn't, didn't admonish him or put him off like he did the angels when they said, when they, he said, they said, why are you going to create a vice gerund? You're going to create blood? He said, I'll tell you, I know what you don't know. He gave Ibrahim an answer. So you have a right to answer. If Ibrahim asks Allah for answer, you have a right to ask for yourself. How are you doing this? What you doing with that money? We will show you. Look around. Ask the people. They may not give you their personal business, but they'll say, yes, Master the Talheed helps us. So you help us to help them. We're not asking for a handout, just a hand. That's what we do Islamically. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azawajal. That we'll try to be a better example, all of us, for our children. They rely on us, and we're going to rely on them soon we blink their eyes. See these chairs? We're going to blink our eyes. This message might be half full of chairs. We're going to be too old to pray like we really want to, some of us. We're going to need these children, these little boys and little girls. They need the training right now. They need us to show them the best way. We need to put them up front and give them responsibilities. Yes, they need it because we need it. We pray Allah will help us forgive us. اللهم لك الحمد أنت نور السماوات والأرض ومن فيهم ولك الحمد أنت خير السماوات والأرض ومن فيهم ولك الحمد أنت الحق ووعدك حق وقاؤك حق ولقاؤك حق وجنة حق والنار حق والساعة حق والنبي حق ومحمد حق صلى الله عليه وسلم
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama sallaytu ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad kama barik ala Ibrahim wa 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 ala